Welcome everyone, today's episode starts with a riddle. Not, not this one, where does it come from? So right now you may grab some water after this funniest joke ever. <laughs> and here comes my riddle. As you can see, there are two Frekis on the board. And Freki has this passive ability when he gives plus one life and plus one attack to all of the other beasts that you have on the board. So as you can see, currently they buff each other. Right now, I will deal one damage to one Freki, and I will use a second strike to deal damage to a second Freki. As you can see, they both have one life till they die right now. And here comes my question. What will happen to the second Freki if I will use strike and kill the first one? Option A. He will live with one life. Option B. He will die. You can write your predictions in the comments. And the answer is not so simple. It depends on a few factors. So let's go down on this problem and try to overanalyze it. So, when I asked this question to my friends, the answers were various. It is because we have two different concepts in here. One comes from Magic the Gathering and board games, and the second one comes from Hearthstone, which are totally different. Let me start with Magic the Gathering, as I think that it is easier to explain this. And the first thing in here is that I don't have any Magic the Gathering cards, I have World of Warcraft trading card game cards, which can serve also as example. So in Magic the Gathering there is a rule which says if a creature has equal or more damage mark on it, then it has toughness, then it is destroyed. And now let me show you an example of this. So I have a creature and I put 1-1 one, one counter on it. Now its toughness is 6. And now I'm dealing 5 damage to it, which means that it has 5 damage and 6 toughness, and everything is okay. And now my opponent plays a card that orders me to remove all of the tokens from a card. Which means that my creature right now has 5 toughness and 5 damage. So it must be destroyed. And this thing comes from how we track the damage in a real world. We just put the counters in here, and if we reduce the life of the card, it is totally natural that it will die because we have more damage counters than it has life. And now let's go to the Hearthstone. And the first thing in here is that the Hearthstone was designed as a totally different game than any cardboard game that I previously played. And it is because Hearthstone has this mentality of easy to learn, hard to master. And it applies to more casual players also. And there is no way that you can do something against the rules, the game won't allow you to do it. So all of the rules from the trading card games could be abandoned in exchange for simplicity. And in the initial version of Hearthstone, if card with buffs would die and they buff the other cards and they would die too, could be misleading to the player. Not like later they introduced cards like Shadow Walk or something, yay. Yeah? So I was thinking how I should show this to you in a real world example. And what I came up with are those tokens. From one side they are yellow, which means that the card has a life, and from the other side they are grey, which means that the life is depleted. So you can kind of treat the depleted side like a damage. And currently you can see that I have a card which has 5 maximum life, so it has 5 of yellow tokens. Now I will deal a free damage to it, so I will turn the 3 of those tokens to the other side, which is grey, which represents the damage, and right now you can see that I have 2 yellow tokens, which means that the card has 2 life left, and 3 grey tokens, which means that it has been dealt free damage. And next thing I will do, I will buff up my card with plus 3 life, which you can see right now that I'm doing, and I'm putting 3 yellow tokens in here. And the card right now has 8 max life, which means that it has 8 tokens when 3 of them are depleted and 5 of them are active on the yellow side. And here comes the trick that right now I will silence the card, so it must return to its natural state. To do this, I must remove 3 of the tokens, so the cards will only have 5 tokens active right now. And the game always prioritizes removing the damage tokens, the used ones, so if I will remove 3 of them, I will finish with a card which has full HP. And in my personal opinion this is kind of strange, but this is how the Hearthstone works. Let us go to the answer right now. You have enough theorem to know how the life works in card games. And you know right now that both option A and B are possible in here. However, I had to make a choice, and choice I did is an option B, because this is more natural and familiar for me. Right now you can see that I will use Strike to kill the Freki, and it will result in death of all the other Frekis. And what I never did, I never checked how this mechanism will work with like 30 of Frekis. So I introduce you to the Hall of the Monte Kings. You know what? Let's get straight to the point, it's taking too much time anyway. Let me show you a piece of code which is responsible for this heresy. Did I set heresy? Yeah, in a moment you will see why I did this. 
So normally you are solving situations like this by using a stack. But I'm a solo developer, I don't have time to write those things, and I need to get them working fast. So it's recursion, but I will get to this later. And to program all of the asynchronous stuff, I just use reactive extensions, and I don't want to explain all of them to you, but I will just explain the concat stuff. The fastest way to explain the concat is like when something finishes, it is over, then go and do next steps, like you can see in here. So the first thing I'm doing in here, I'm triggering all of the play effects on the card. So I have this dictionary in here, and it keys are event triggers, like play, defend, turn start, def, and the value of those events is a list which contains all of the events that are in here. So if, for example, I will pass a play as an argument of this function, you can see that I'm selecting all of the events that are currently under the play of the card. And later I'm triggering those events with concat, which means play this event, wait for it to finish, play next event, wait for it to finish, and so on and so on. So you can see that with this approach it is easy to add new events to the card. And as I did said earlier, the next steps are to recursive check support for dying targets. So you can see that I'm looking in here for any dying enemy or player cards. And if there are none, it means that the recursive check is over and we can proceed to the next phase of the play. But if there is at least one dying card, it means that the death may trigger the death of another card. So we are just triggering all of the death effect of the dying card and calling the checks recursively. And again, so we are just triggering all of the death effect of the dying card. Nope! I know where this is going. If you're still in here, it means you get to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You may consider liking, subscribing, or even sharing it. Thank you for this. See ya, boy!